good morning students very glad to meet you all once again so today we are going to discuss about an uh, another important clinical topic i am going to compare the blood pressure with the different respiratory diseases that means what is the significance of measuring blood pressure in respiratory conditions we all know what is blood pressure if you say in examination the blood pressure of the patient what we say patient is having a bp of 120 by 80 systole 120 and diastole by 80 mm of mercury which is measured in the right upper limb in sitting posture or measured in the right lower limb in the lying posture so this is the way we have to see we have to mention the bp we have to mention where you are measuring it and uh, in what position fine after this basic introduction now i'm going to come to a topic called bp and rs blood pressure and respiratory system we know the blood pressure is of two types either it can be a not we know we all should have a normal blood pressure but if suppose the blood pressure is high okay hypertension more than 140 90 or the blood pressure is low less than 90 60 that is hypotension then what are the respiratory conditions you will think of so to open the account let me start with hypotension and respiratory system if suppose a patient is coming to you with a complaint of breathlessness chest pain which is of stabbing type and which is an acute onset of breathlessness and in the patient you are measuring the bp and the bp is this below 90 by 60 what are the things to run in your mind me being a pulmonologist first thing what i will think of is an tension pneumothorax tension pneumothorax actually what it is we all know when there is a pneumothorax what will happen the air will start collecting in the pleural cavity when the air starts collecting the pleural cavity what happens my friends so the lung gets collapsed so and this is creating an impact and pressure over the heart when it is causing pressure over the heart what will happen to the cardiac output it will decrease when cardiac output decreases what will happen to the blood pressure blood pressure will also decrease so tension pneumothorax should be suspected in respiratory cases when patient comes with hypotension i hope you all understand so what are the conditions where you will think of a pneumothorax when the patient is and if it is a spontaneous primary pneumothorax patient will be usually a male tall individuals basketball players we all know if suppose it is in secondary then patient will be always already having and pre existing lung disease like copd pre existing like bronchiectasis some cystic lung disease etc so tension pneumothorax presents with hypotension please remember it's not an ordinary pneumothorax i'm again saying it. tension i'm using the word tension because tension pneumothorax is a clinical term what does it mean simply it is a pneumothorax in which patient is vitally unstable so vitally unstable is since what he is having a low bp he is having a high pulse rate he is having a fall in saturation that is called as tension pneumothorax tension pneumothorax is purely a clinical diagnosis it is nowhere something by x ray you find the patient is in tension no it is a clinical diagnosis so bp hypotension with rs breathlessness chest pain think of tension pneumothorax coming to another scenario if a patient is coming is a known case of tuberculosis okay he is coming to you with a sudden low bp and you are seeing his hands it is full of an hyperpigmented hands he is coming with a low bp what will you think of definitely we have to think of addison's disease what is addison's disease addison's disease is a hypofunctioning of the adrenal glands adrenal glands gives us steroids when there is a hypofunctioning of adrenal glands addison's what will happen that is called addison's what will happen the steroid production will be less that is the glucocorticoid and medullocorticoid so that is medullocorticoid is only maintaining our bp if it is functioning less than the bp also will fall down okay so the most common cause of addison's disease that is hypofunctioning of the adrenal gland in india is tuberculosis whereas the most common cause of addison's disease in the world is autoimmune but whereas in india it is tb then this how it can present it can present to us with weakness it can present to us with hypotension it is one of the important indication in tuberculosis where we give steroids because tuberculosis we don't give steroids everywhere we give to certain indications which we'll discuss in later videos but indications of one of the indication for important indication for steroid in tuberculosis is addison's disease this patients will present to you with the hypotension so bp rather is hypotension with respiratory system addison's third we know that many cases infective cases pneumonia okay patient may present with viral pneumonia or bacterial pneumonia okay any kind of infection they may progress to ards which is an inflammatory condition of the lung when the patients go to ards what will happen that systemic infection may spread to the blood then the patient may go to the multi organ dysfunction sepsis so if a pneumonia patient is presenting with hypotension it is a warning sign that patient is entering into 
ARDS. The patient is entering into sepsis. So what we have to think of in those patients? Definitely he needs an ICU management. Are you understanding? So an infection case presenting with hypotension, warning that patient is going to sepsis, he needs an ICU management. So blood pressure, respiratory system in view of hypotension, tension pneumothorax, my first differentials, additions, definitely everything if that scenario matches, sepsis if that scenario matches. Hope you all understood hypotension and RS. Now coming to the second perspective. The second perspective of our video is, if suppose the patient is having an high blood pressure, high BP, that is hypertension more than 140-90 and he is having some respiratory conditions. So what respiratory conditions can present you with high BP? Number one, OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. Many of my OSA patients, many of my personal practice, many of my OSA patients are hypertension. Hypertension is a very important comorbidity associated with OSA. These hypertension patients be going to the medicine clinic, to the diabetologist, to the hypertension specialist. Sir, I'm having a high BP to the cardiologist. They will be starting him on diuretics, then they'll be putting on AC inhibitors, then ARBs, then calcium channel blockers, every kinds of things. But the BP is not going to reduce unless you treat the OSA with a CPAP. Hope you understand. So OSA patients will present with hypertension. So retrogradely, how will you pick up these patients, these kinds of OSA? You are seeing the patient, he is coming for BP checking, sir, I am having a high BP. But if you see the patient, patient will be obese. Patient will have a BMA more than 40. Patient will be having double chin. Patient will be asked the history, are you a snorer? He will say, yeah, oh, I am just a great snorer. The wife will complain. He will be having the history of daytime sleepiness. So all these histories will be there when there is an OSA. So retrogradely pick up this OSA cases. So he will not present you with OSA and hypertension. Whereas he will be presenting with hypertension to many departments. You pick up these cases and explain to them that is because of OSA you are getting an hypertension and please get treated them with CPAP. Hope you understood. Second, OHS that is obesity hypoventilation syndrome. It is also called as Pickwickian syndrome. T-I-C-K. Pickwickian syndrome. Okay, OHS. It is an MCQ, Big Weekend Syndrome. You know that Charles Dickens cartoon, there was a uh, character called as Adam who is a snorer. Okay, so based on that, the name came, Big Weekend Syndrome, OHS. This obesity hyperventilation syndrome, they are also associated with hypertension, which is both systemic and pulmonary. They will have pulmonary hypertension also and systemic hypertension also. Understood? Okay. Now, third scenario, COPD. COPD has got several comorbidities, which is a very important long note, very important viva question for most of the MD Palmo exams. Okay, what are the comorbidities of the COPD? Even when I was having my uh, long case with COPD, examiner asked me, uh, Sabri, what are the comorbidities associated with COPD? Then I have to say a big list. Okay, starting from osteoporosis, starting from an hypertension, cardiac atrial fibrillations, uh, and cardiac failures, uh, osteoporosis, uh, mental depression. So there's a big list of the comorbidities associated with COPD. In that the most important and most common comorbidity with COPD is hypertension. COPD and hypertension can be seen a lot of times together. Okay, and these COPD patients with hypertension has more chance to develop uh, heart failures, more chance for going into arrhythmias. What is the most common arrhythmia in COPD? It is MAT, multifocal atrial tachycardia, okay, followed by that atrial fibrillation. Fine. Then, one more scenario. If suppose you are having a hypertension related to the respiratory system, what else you will think of? Definitely, we have to think of steroid abuse. Because many of our patients, what they will be doing? They will not be taking the drug which is prescribed to the doctor or they will not come to the doctor itself. They will directly go to the counter and having wheezing and having breathlessness. That pharmacy people or some quacks, what they do? Directly write tablet methylprednisolone. Okay, or these pharmacy people, ah, please put this, he will be giving prednisolones. So the patients will be taking a steroid, steroid, he will be feeling symptomatically, yeah, I am good. But this steroid abuse, when it increases, more amount of steroid, 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 what are the complications of steroid? What not is the complication of the steroid? Department to department, we have side effects. Steroid causes glaucoma, steroid causes cataract, steroid causes hypertension, steroid causes osteoporosis, everything the steroid is causing. Dyslipidemia, etc., weight gain, everything, what not. So, steroid abuse can present to you with hypertension. So, many respiratory conditions, steroid is the drug of choice and this steroid should be given selectively in indications. But they misuse the steroid a lot and because of that they end up with hypertension. Okay, so hope you understand what are the hypertension related respiratory conditions. So, coming to a nutshell, BP in RS, hypertension, hypertension, hypotension, pneumothorax, additions, sepsis. Hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, obesity hypermentation syndrome, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and steroid. Hope this video was useful to you. Thank you.